What's happening, family? It is time to pray. I want to look at Ephesians chapter 3 on this evening. We've been focusing on one central notion in our evening time of prayer, and that notion is don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. In Ephesians 3 and verse number 17, listen to this text. Only one verse. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend. I want to read the same verse in the easy to read version of the Bible. I pray that Christ will live in your hearts because of faith. I pray that your life will be strong in love and built on love. Paul gives us another beautiful reason why we ought not ever stop praying. Don't stop praying because there's power in your life that comes through Christ. Christ, when he number one, takes up residency. Paul says, I pray that Christ will live in your hearts because of your faith. Notice what he does with faith. He gives us this interesting connection that helps us to appreciate the faith is connected to what we know about God. Ephesians 3 verses 1 through 5. The more I know about God then will be carried out by what I practice for God. So Paul then argues that I'm praying Christ will take up residency, that he will live in your hearts because of faith. Now, wait a minute. Ask the question practically. What happens when someone takes up residence in a particular location? What happens when anybody takes up residence with you? Well, a number of things practically happen. Number one. The place of residence begins to take on their personality. Number two, the place of residence begins to take on their particular unique touch. Number three, the resident, them, they begin to have a certain ownership, a certain degree of ownership to the location in which they are residing. Number five or number four, the resident also begins to take up a certain level of possessiveness to that location. They start calling the place theirs and they start acting as if it is theirs. But then number five, the residence becomes more of a space for where living takes place than just a place where they are. Did you catch that? God wants then your faith to walk so deeply that you and I walk in a way where our body and our inner being become a space and a place where life happens. In other words, the residence of your person becomes more than a space. It becomes a location where life happens and that life is happening with Christ. Can't you hear John chapter 1 and verse number 12 or John chapter 10 and verse number 10. God wants abundant living to take place through Christ who takes up residence in you. He wants to change your personality. He wants to add his touch. He wants to have some ownership. He wants to have a little bit of possessiveness to who you are so that it becomes more than just a body walking around, but a space and a location in the inner being where life takes place. God wants real life to happen through our prayer and our desire for Christ to take up residency in us. So don't stop praying. Your full, robust life with Christ is contingent on you praying that Christ takes up residency. But then number two, don't stop praying because the residence of Christ allows for the nature of the residence of Christ allows for resilience in your inner man. Don't stop praying because the resilience that you gain as a result of Christ residing in you is the ability for you to overcome. Look at the second part of Paul's prayer again. I pray that Christ will live in your hearts because of your faith. I pray that your life will become strong in love and built on love. Notice what he gives us. Overcoming, the ability for you and I to overcome is always connected to love. Love is a, is a base understanding and base element for overcoming anything. Notice God overcame death because of his love. You and I overcome the issues of life because of our love. We will not be brought down by anything in this created world because of God's love. Romans 8 verse 37 through 39. And in a like fashion then, overcoming is the strength that God gives us to function out of love and to be founded 
by love. The ability for Christ to reside in us gives us the ability to overcome and be resilient with whatever you've got going on in your life. Let me just share something with you. Whatever you got dealing with, whatever you're dealing with right this moment, whatever struggle you have, whatever issue you have, whatever trouble you've got in your way, whatever's on your mind, in your spirit, whatever depression, whatever anxiety, whatever fear, whatever provision that you think you need, when you allow Christ to take up residence in you, he gives you the resilient power to overcome through love. When Christ resides, love abides. And when love abides, victory is promised. That's the guarantee we see from the cross all the way even to the, to the resurrection. The most prominent characteristic of any Christ follower is the ability to live out of the facet of love. You think about every passage where Jesus would say, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love. By this, or Paul would teach that the greatest of these is love. I promise you, whatever struggle you've got going on, put some love on it through the mentality of Jesus Christ and you will overcome, even if it means love yourself better. Love yourself better, love another better, love your situation better, love God more, whatever the case may be. When you and I put love on whatever you're going through, God promises the ability to overcome. Romans chapter 8 verse 37 to 39, I've already alluded, alluded to it, but there's nothing in this created world that will be able to separate you from the love of God. If you can get that, then you can understand that in like fashion, when I walk in love, there's nothing in this created world that can overcome me. Let love then be the power that you get your strength from, the foundation that your life is built on and the strength you get to move through. We will move through this season. We will move through whatever issue we have. Why? Because Christ will take up residence and the love of Christ will make me resilient. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We thank you for the promises you've given us. We thank you, Lord God, for the, for the significance of what you offer us when we continue to pray. God, I ask that you bless your people to never stop praying. Help us to live in that mantra uh, the, where we do not, where we don't stop praying, but we move through in a way, Lord God, where we allow Christ through our faith to be, to be uh, in complete control, to take up residency in our life where we can see his personality in ours. We can see his touch. We can see his ability to take ownership and to take some possession of who we are, where life can be lived with Christ in us. God, I pray that you bless your people to have a spirit of resilience, to have the ability to overcome, to not allow the enemy in any of the ways that he attempts to manipulate us in our thinking, in our habits, in our behavior, in the things that are going on around us. Help us to keep life in perspective and to know that love overcomes everything. Love overcomes anything this life throws at us because you've already proven you so love the world that you beat the world at the best it can throw through the life, death, and burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And because of that, Lord God, you've given us love to be able to move through whatever we're moving through even right now. God, I pray that you bless your people with strength. Bless all those that are right now continuing to wrestle through the issues of the pandemic. Be with those that are hurting. Be with those that are serving. Be with those that are waiting. Be with those of us, Lord God, that are in a holding pattern, it seems, as we watch and look for you to do what only you can do. Heal and deliver. Strengthen and give us resolve. Help us, oh God, to be the kind of people that can walk with you, trust you every step, to wake up and not walk by faith, but a walk by, by sight, but walk by faith. Help us, oh God, to Keep our hands in the promises of yours and the power of yours and the, all the things that you've offered us through your word. We ask, oh God, that you bless us to have a kind of mentality in which we say that we may not know what's on the morrow, but we know the one who holds it. We love you. We honor you. We bless you. We kiss at your feet. We thank you for being our God. Thank you for being so faithful, for being so loving, for being so committed, for being so consistent. Thank you, Lord, for being present with us, even when we don't know how to be present. We ask, oh God, that you bless us with one more step that will bring you honor and glory. And Father, we promise to give you all the glory. Walk with us even right now. And we ask all this in Jesus' name as we together say amen. Listen, listen, don't stop praying. Pray in such a way 
that you remember that your your power comes out of Christ taking up residence. Pray in such a way that you remember that your ability to be resilient comes out of that Christ whose habitat is now showing itself in your inner man. Don't stop praying. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to ask you, please pray for me. Let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you.